Now, I like to see myself as quite a positive person, looking for the best in everything I review on the channel. And I generally won't review something that I feel is too shockingly bad to go on the channel. Hence why most of my products I've looked at have at least something redeeming about them. This is where the Ipega arcade stick for Nintendo Switch comes in. At $26, it's one of the cheapest arcade sticks you can currently get, with other competitors coming in around almost double. And why? Well, here's the thing. There's a lot to like about this arcade stick, but other design choices are unbelievably baffling. So buying cheap worth it for what you get? Let's find out as we look at the Ipega arcade stick for the Nintendo Switch. Hello and welcome to Console Accessories and on today's video we're going to be looking at this. It's an arcade stick. It's called the iPega, the Gladiator game joystick for N Switch. It has control joystick, plug and play and turbo functions and again it's got one of those stickers on the front that if you peel off it just takes most of the packaging off so we'll leave that on. Okay so as I said in the introduction I've got some good things to say about this and got some bad things to say about this and I picked this up for 20, 24 quid. You can get this for $26 in the US and immediately that's uh, the first positive because it's cheap. It's about half the price and if you are looking for an arcade stick, you've probably looked online and found that there's the Hori version. Um, that's a really good, really good stick. It is twice as much. Is it worth, is it twice as much worth more than this? We'll, we'll see, we'll see. So and then looking on the back, product features. This product is used for playing single joystick control games of N-Switch, e.g. Mario, series um, Street Fighter 2. I've got Mario Kart 8 loaded up on there so we'll give it a whirl in a second. Plug and play, um, I have already used this and it literally is plug and play. Stick your switch in and it syncs up beautifully. That's more of the switch rather than the, rather than the joystick so that's a really good thing. And um, with a turbo function of eight function buttons and I'll, and I'll uh, run you through what they are. Okay so let's crack it open. Instructions, fantastic. And then here it is. Like I said, let's go through some positives first before I go through the, the glaringly obvious uh, negatives if you haven't seen already. Okay, so positives number one. The price is the big, the big one. And secondly, the build quality. It, it feels really nice, I mean, it feels really good, really pleased with the build quality and as we always do, let's just wait, it's not going to be much at all, 179 grams, that's nothing because if we compare it to a switch which is 419, it's less than half isn't it? So it's light so that's a good thing. And it has these lovely big rubber pads on the bottom here which stop it from moving. So when you are playing, I mean, if I hold the table, if I kind of push it, you can push it, but if you're pushing down even a little bit, it's not gonna move. So that's really good. Feels nice, feels really nice, good quality. And the other good thing about it is this stand bit. This is what kind of drew me to it. It's this stand bit where the switch just fits on it beautifully. So if you can see there, it's probably better if I go over here. If you can see there, there's like a plastic bit there that sticks out and then you've got your USB-C connector there. So on the back of your switch, it, it beautifully sits in there and connects in there. So it kind of almost locks it in. It's, a, it's really good, it's really good. So when you want to fit it in, it's literally just putting it and plonking it on. And there we go, it sits in there, kind of locks in. So it's gonna stay in there. And it fits nicely and this is really good this is what i really like about this it's the kind of the built-in stand to it so when you're playing you you've got a stand in it whereas a lot of the other fighting sticks usually have a cable so the cable can go to the dock yeah but this is more of kind of just like your desktop solution whereas the cable would plug into the dock and 
you'd be playing it with your Switch somewhere else. But I really like this because I like myself a bit of handheld and I just think an all-in-one solution. They are superb. I really do like that. Another positive is the on-point branding. The matching colours, the blue, the black and the red. That's really good. They've, that's really nice. It would have been easy for them to just to use some sort of various colours for their branding, but they've matched it and they've matched it fairly well. So the colours... The blues and the reds, they match quite well. Yeah, quite, they've really done, they've done well with that. And as I said, when we fire it up, it was so easy. I've already done this, but when we fire it up, it was literally plonking it on and, it's, and you're good to go. And it works straight away. So that's another positive, really pleased with that. When all the buttons work, work fine. Okay, so let's mute that for a bit. Um, as far as positives, I think that's probably about it, I'm afraid. On to some negatives. Um, if you haven't already noticed, there's probably two or three ones that would mean that I couldn't really recommend this. If I show you, so let's take this Joy-Con off, this can make it, make it a bit easier. So basically, this is going to be replicated onto here. Now, if I put them side by side and show you here, and you, can you kind of spot the difference? It's A, B, X and Y there. Why on earth is that not X, Y, A and B? It's not, they've put A, B, X and Y. They've just gone, oh, do you know what? I reckon they've got to put it in alphabetical order. A, B's got to go there because it's alphabetical, and X, Y's got to go alphabetical. They haven't thought that it needs to map those. It needs to be X at the top. It needs to be B there. It needs to be A there. So you're playing it kind of like that. Because if you're playing it at an angle, you've got your mapping it there, and then you think L and R, that's almost in the right place with the L left and left, or slightly left and slightly right. So why is that not X and Y, A and B? That, oh, that would infuriate me. Because if you're playing handheld and you want to play onto this, you'd be thinking, well, this is B and this is A. It's not, it's the wrong way around. So that's wrong, really annoying. And secondly as well, if you look at all the other fighting sticks, they've got, um, they've got eight buttons. And why? Because you're gonna want the ZL and ZR there as well. ZL and ZR's up there. Why is it up there? Why, I don't want it up there, I want it here. Because there's certainly some games that do use these buttons. So why put them up there? It's to save it and to make it the size. Yes, I understand that. And so it doesn't make it too big. But come on, just another half a centimetre either side or a centimetre either side. And then just put two more of the buttons, the ZL and the ZL and ZR there. So you've got them all there, but you haven't. So when you want to play your ZL, you need to press it up there. The other button's there, the turbo. The turbo works by, um, you hold down the turbo and then you just, uh, you throw hold that and then you press the turbo and then you, what the turbo would be on the Y or L. Press the turbo and the turbo would be on the L. Fantastic. And then you plus in your Y over there. That's okay. Plus and Y there, fine. Home, fine. There's home. Fine. Not a problem. And again, no screenshot button. So, it, to be fair, it's not too hard just to press it there, is it? Just press it there. Not too bad. And again, another disappointment is this tiny stick. I mean, it's tiny. It's tiny. I've got fairly big adult hands anyway, but come on. <laughs> That's insane. Look at it. Look at it. I, can't, I mean, it's, it's, it's just too little. This isn't for prof professionals. This isn't for people who want a really good arcade stick to play the fighting games, because you're not. And it it springs back nicely, but there's, it's, it's all a bit, it's all a bit gooey and a bit free, a, a bit free will. Whereas it would have been nice maybe if it had had the octagonal bit on, like the, the like the, uh, the, the GameCube controllers is when you go for diagonal, you're not gonna be 100% sure if you're gonna get it or not. Okay, but that's just for fighting games. For other games, it's, you can get it, but really, that's that's a, that's quite small, I think. But, you know, it has, L, it has L3, so that's not too bad. Okay, so we've got, we've got some positives and we've got some negatives. For me, the, the buttons around there is just poorly thought out. I don't know why they've done that. Um, 
every other fighting stick has it the other way around. All the others has B and A, B and A, because that's what it is for the Switch. Oh, so. Get on. But it does look cool. I mean, if you want to buy this just for a desktop stand, it's not bad. It's not bad. But again, another disappointment is that's it. It takes power from the switch. So you see the LED there when you when you when you power on your switch, the LED comes on. Can you see that? And then when you power the switch off, the LED goes off. So the LED comes on. So this is taking power from your switch. So the switch. Battery is going to run out a little bit quicker, but don't worry, you can plug it in and charge up your switch. Oh no, you can't. So, so here, look, it's blank there, blank there, blank there, blank there. I don't know, maybe it's because it's so cheap, but would it have cost so much just to put a USB C port in there? So then when you're playing, you can plug it in and you can have it charging your switch and not take too much this don't take too much power from the switch so but okay I don't want to sound so too negative it looks cool it looks nice it looks nice to have it there and if you want it somewhere for your for your switch to stand you could use it for that and it, it, I mean it plays okay so let's quickly play Mario Kart and then we'll turn the um a so I was gonna press that you see let's play let's play some Mario Kart let's turn the volume down a bit on this okay so as you see, it works. It works nicely. Uh, let, me, let me jump. There we go. Let me jump and then we use. So there we go. Okay. So it feels really good to play with. It's a bit like I was saying earlier. It was a bit loose and a bit free will for it, but it's okay. It works okay. And the viewing angle's nice. That's a nice viewing angle. So you'd have it kind of. What's that? A foot, foot and a half away from your face. Okay. And then home and A. So, what do you think? Are you going to bother getting one of these? I don't know, for the for the price, 24 quid or $26. It's quite a lot for what it is. You might want to just stump up the extra $20 and get the hoary version. I haven't played that one, so I don't know what that one's like. But this would be, I'd say, for a cheaper version. So, kind of, if you if you if you've got kids that want to get into it and they want to they want an arcade stick, I think this would be ideal because I don't think it's going to break anytime soon because it's uh, it's not much to it and it feels quite sturdy. So, okay, so quite a few positives, but quite a few negatives, and I think the negatives for me is a shame. Oh, not quite for me, I'm afraid. Okay, so that's a quick look at this one. Uh, if you've got any questions on it, please leave a comment below and hit the thumbs up. It would really appreciate it. And if you're new around here, do subscribe. We never know. We might get out the Hori, Hori version and give that a whirl and compare it to this one. Okay. Hope that's everything. Let me know if you, you've got any questions and I'll happily answer them. And until the next video. Bye-bye.